Hello there. So great to be able to be a little part of your conversations today, even if via a pre-record from the other side of the world. I'm Catherine Trebek. I'm one of the co-founders of the Wellbeing Economy Alliance in Scotland and also a co-founder of the Global We All organisation. And I've been thinking back to the first Wealth of Nations 2.0 back in 2018, when We All Scotland was just a small group of volunteers. And we invited folk to meet in Edinburgh and to our amazement, tickets were snapped up pretty much instantly. We asked attendees what was going well in Scotland in terms of economic system change and what support could an organisation like We All deliver to help hasten things. And like the people sitting around you today, there were folks from business, from government, from civil society and from academia. And in that diversity, they were united in the recognition that if Scotland was to have a chance at dealing with the challenges it faced, we needed to look beyond putting sticking plasters on the symptoms and turn our gaze upstream to the nature of the economic system and ask harder questions of our economy. Who is winning and who is losing from it? What sort of businesses are propagated? What impact on people and planet do production and consumption systems have? And of course, back in 2018, that was before COVID. That was before Glasgow hosted the COP last year. That was before New Zealand announced their wellbeing budget plans. It was before the First Minister did her TED talk on the need for a wellbeing economy and the role of the wellbeing economy government's partnership in supporting other governments build it. And it was before the UN General Secretary described the climate crisis as a code red for humanity. And now we're in a year 2022, when the talk of a wellbeing economy and the ideas inherent in it have reached a pace and reached quarters we couldn't have imagined back in 2018. The Scottish government now says it's, its goal is to build a wellbeing economy in Scotland. The World Economic Forum is running a series on Beyond GDP. Next year, the European Parliament will host a conference on Beyond Growth. Last year, we saw the Dasgupta Review, a report commissioned by the UK government treasury, recognised the need to see the economy as nested within society and nature, not on top of them. Essentially what ecological economists and what feminist economists have been saying for decades and what First Nations communities have been living for millennia. We're also in a year when floods are decimating huge parts of Australia where I am today, when a third of Pakistan was underwater just a few months ago, and when heat waves and wildfires hit Europe in the 2022 summer. It is a year when the city of Melbourne has appointed heat officers to help set up places of sanctuary for vulnerable people during heat waves. And when not just food banks, but now warm banks are being opened across the UK. It's a year when scientists are saying that the carbon budget to stay within 1.5 degrees will be used within just nine years. This is also a year when we saw how much the economy serves those at the top, with billionaires and those just below them doing very well in terms of their financial wealth during the pandemic. And yet we've had also more evidence from organisations like Oxfam of the huge inequalities in material and carbon footprints that illustrate how very true the line is, that social justice and the climate question are two sides of the same coin. And coin is a really apt metaphor because it is the economy that links the two. To a great extent, the way the economy is designed, purposed, distributed, and perhaps sometimes worshipped as a goal in its own right is a root cause of the many challenges facing the world. So your conversations today couldn't be more timely. And I'm excited to see, and I promise I will watch the recordings of your discussions, how you plan to push for action beyond the decent rhetoric we were hearing from government. How you plan to support the incredible pioneers in Scotland who have rolled up their sleeves and are building a wellbeing economy in their own patch of the world today. How you will work together so that diverse movement necessary to drive change at the scale and the pace needed is strong, collaborative, learns from each other, reinforces each other's work, and perhaps most importantly, has some fun together. Because while it is hard to imagine a more timely task than economic system change, undertaking it is hard work. It is more than a tweak here, a focus on resilience and survival there, efforts to humanize and heal, projects with more small scale and short-term focus. This is about transformational change. It's system focused, it's got justice as a goal. It's about being prepared to question structures and power with big ambition and a long-term upstream mission. So we need to enjoy ourselves as best we can on the way. So have a good time today there, folks. Be bold in your deliberations and know that plenty of people here in Australia, in government and beyond, 
have their eye on Scotland as a country that shows that building a wellbeing economy is not just urgently needed, but entirely possible. Thank you so much.